What's up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video and today we'll be going over the weekly reset guide for March 6th of Destiny 2. If you didn't know, Iron Banner is back. I completed the seasonal challenge, but you can also do the daily challenges. All you have to do is complete three challenges in the Iron Banner and you will be able to get some extra tokens there. We'll be going over uh, the gear and whatnot later, but first let's just go over the stuff in the directory. So first up we have the Nightfall. Looks like we have the Pyramidian Nightfall this time. And as you know, in update 1.1.3 you don't have modifiers, but if you do have the Nightfall challenge card from last week, you can go to the prestige mode and you can put on uh, the power handicap and your void singe or whatever singe you want there. Also comes with a singwish, which is the thing in Destiny 1 where if you all die, you get uh, sent to orbit and all that good stuff. So I think void singe might be the way to go on this one. I don't know, I'll have to test it out myself, but still, that's the way I'd go with that one as well. Moving on, let's see what the flashpoint is this time around. Looks like we have Nessus. Again, all you have to do is complete public events and take out, um, what is it, high ranking enemies in those areas, which are like the yellow bar enemies. They have they have like a cool name by them and stuff like that. So you'll, you'll know who they are. They're kind of hard to take down and whatnot uh but yeah let's move on to the tower and check out the vendors all right we just arrived with Kay. let's check out his treasure maps as we know the flashpoint is nessus as i mentioned so you can pick up the scout report basically it'll just hi highlight uh nearby caches for you for four hours i really don't need that i usually have a ghost that takes care of that for me but let's pick these up and let's check out where they are so you can't track these like you can a public event or anything like that but you can kind of just like see where the general area where they are you can't like if if you think you're on top of it it's either above or below you just keep that in mind as well so one two three four five boom these look like some pretty easy area this one might be tricky because this is a well so it's going to drop uh drop out a little bit right here this one's kind of up in the tree so you might want to watch that as well um yeah just keep that in mind it could be above or below you there are, like this terrain for this area is kind of weird like i know like over here there's like a drop in a cave or something i don't know it's really weird so it's just if you can't find it definitely just take a different area uh, of approach all right, we just arrived at Ikora. Let's see what her meditation missions are this time around. If you didn't know, Ikora has the Vanguard Research Tokens and allows you to get that original gear from the original Destiny 2 campaign. So you can get this original gear. It doesn't come with like, oh, any ornaments or anything like that, like with some of the other gear. But still, if you want it, you can get it. Looks like the missions, we have Combustion, we have Hope, and then we have the new Curse of Osiris one, A Deadly Trial. So if you want any of this gear and maybe some Curse of Osiris weapons that like you don't have yet, it could be available in this loot pool here. Again, we gotta check out Benedict 9940, the Emperor's advocate for all that raid gear and whatnot. Definitely gotta see uh, what I'm missing from the raid. So it looks like he has the prestige helmet, the normal raid gauntlets, the prestige raid chest piece, the Eater of Worlds leg piece, the prestige raid class item, and the Eater of Worlds grenade launcher. I am alive. Let's check out the perks here. I think they messed up the perks. Yeah, they did. It's still messed up, but that's okay. It looks like it comes with adaptive frame, a well-rounded grip, reliable and sturdy. You have three launch hole barrels, confined launch, quick launch, and the smart drift control. And then you have moving target, increased moving speed, and target acquisition when moving while aiming down sights. And then you have auto-loading holster. The holster weapon is automatically reloaded after a short period of time. Personally, I really like this weapon. I mean, I use it for mostly PvE activities just because... Uh, PvP, obviously grenade launchers aren't the best. The only one that's really good is like colony and play the game. And this one doesn't fit any of those archetypes clearly, but still I think it performs very, very well in PvE and especially with all loading holster. Uh, you can put it away, pump some few shots of like whatever you have, positive outlook, whatever, and then you can pull this thing back out and keep going. All right, we just arrived at Eververse to see what she has. She has the biggest loot pool that is rotating, but yeah, so basically to purchase all this stuff, you have to have Bright Dust, which is right up here. And all you have to do is dismantle anything that you get in here. It looks like she has a lot of stuff this time around. So emote, we have the Humbug emote. We have the Grooving Dance emote. We have the Exotic Sparrow, the Curse of Foresight. Almost messed that up pretty bad, but I think I have this one on my Titan or something like that. Yeah, nice. Has like that little Vex stuff or whatever you want to call it there. And we also have the Exotic Ship, Sails of Osiris. I still need this one. I still need this one. Dang. Oh. That's just, come on, guys. They, they should get. They should give us. They should give this us for like missions and stuff like that instead of this crap. But looks like we have the merciless break the dawn weapon ornament. I actually have this one. It literally just makes it white. That is literally it. Yeah. See, it's blue. And guess what? No, it's white. So there's really not much of a difference there. But uh, if you don't have it, you could probably pick it up. It looks like we have the eye of Osiris for the Prometheus lens. This was available the first what week of Curse of Osiris. A lot of people got it. A lot of people used it because Prometheus lens was overpowered. But and this isn't my favorite one. I definitely like uh, the new one and the original look better than this one, but that's just me. Looks like we have the ornament for the Kepri's Horn Titan Helmet, the Techno Scarab. I actually like this one a lot better than the original look. It makes it look kind of like, oh, yeah, I like that a lot better. The original look is kind of like hive looking, and I really don't like that. 
um, especially since my other gear doesn't look like Hive or anything like that, so it kind of bothers me a little. Looks like we have the Upward Climber Shell. Looks like we have the Cabal Arrival Transmat Effect. If you don't have this, this one's really fun. Looks like we have the Desert of Gold Shader and the Metallic Sunrise Shader. I don't like either of these, but if you do, go for it. And then obviously you can get the Fireteam Medallion, get you extra uh, gains and rewards for being in a fire team. And then obviously if you complete a Strike or a Crucible match, you get an Eververse reward. So if you want to pick those up, go for it. I literally just went into my menu to do this, but we will be going over the stuff that Lord Talon has this time around. I actually have all of the ornaments, but let's just go over what he has. I'm actually going to give you the best way to obtain these ornaments after we go over the weapons here. So the new weapons, uh, looks like we have an energy pulse rifle, the Gorm's Claw. Looks like it is a Suros pulse rifle. Let's check out the perks. Dad Refrain, well around a grip, reliable, and sturdy. We have the SLO 10 post sight, the SPO 26 front sight, and the SRO 41 ocular scope. Looks like mag-wise, we have a pendant mag, increased magazine size, and we have drop mag magazine drops on reload wasting ammunition but greatly increases reload speed and then finally we have outlaw precision kills greatly decreased reload time i don't think this is going to be really good uh there is another suros pulse rifle that actually comes with outlaw so i find it it's it's kind of pointless it's basically like a reskin and you just add like a little wolf on it whatnot i wish i had like an interesting perk on it you know just something that makes it different it looks like we have the kinetic auto rifle oramun's anvil this is the 450 round per minute archetype so this is the really good archetype that a lot of people like this is the, the uriel's gift origin story positive outlook stuff like that looks like it comes with precision frame this weapon's recoil pattern is more particularly vertical we have the is2 classic sight the model 8 loop sight and the mark 15 lens scope magazine wise we have accurized rounds for that increased range or we have steady rounds for what is it? More stability and slightly decreases range. Oh my gosh, that stability would be ridiculous on this thing. And then we have under pressure, improved stability and accuracy as a magazine gets. Okay, this weapon is this weapon is about to be completely overpowered in the crucible. It basically has like, it looks like the scale lock. It has this perk. You have a lot of range on this thing. You can add stability if you would like, and it still has a good amount of range. And these two sites are really good, especially for like this type of gun. This this weapon's about to be extremely overpowered in the crucible, and it's about to become like one of the new parts of the meta, and I'm extremely excited for that. Looks like we have the power weapon. It's a grenade launcher or wings maul. I'm assuming that's how you say that. Let's check out the perks here real quick. Looks like we have lightweight frame, one shot handheld grenade launcher with remote detonation. Hold your trigger to fire and release the detonate. Looks like we have counter mass, quick launch, and confined launch as the launcher options. Magazine wise, we have concussion grenades and then blinding grenades. Uh, what is it? Emit a blast that staggers enemies and then blinds enemies. So, eh, not really good for a grenade. This is like more of a grenade launcher that you want to use if you're trying to just like, like take people's radar away and stuff like that. And then it has, comes with all in holster. You basically put it away and it reloads itself. I really don't like this archetype of grenade launcher in general just because they don't have a lot of good perks on them. I mean, as I said before, the only good grenade launcher is play the game, which is the crucible one and the colony. This doesn't fit the archetype number one. Like, I understand that, but it's still not, this is not a good grenade launcher. I, I wouldn't pick it up. All right, let's go over the best way to earn these ornaments. So it looks like this one, claim iron banner rewards during season two to earn this ornament. So all you have to do is like turn in packages. You'll eventually get this ornament. Iron pledge ornament, defeat opponents in iron banner during season two. That's pretty simple. All you have to do is go out and kill people in the crucible. That one, that one, I feel like you're going to end up doing anyway. I don't, I forget how many kills you had to get or if there's a percentage, but still that one's pretty simple. I think iron pledge ornament complete daily iron banner milestones during season two. Uh, just basically follow the challenges whenever you hop into iron banner, like whether you need to change your subclass or a certain weapon type, like just do it. I mean, like getting that extra, like I would say tokens is great and all, but definitely try to earn this ornament. I completed this within like the first like three days just because I played on all three of my characters. It was pretty simple. Iron Pledge ornament for the chess piece. Get melee and grenade kills in Iron Banner during season two. This one is hard and I hate saying this, but you definitely need to rock Striker Titan with Syntheseps. Like I hate Striker Titan so much. I hate it so much, but being able to have double pulse nades is really good. And I'm sorry to say it. It's, it is what it is, you know? And I literally played, I think like my last like two hours and I was at 50% and I played, I don't know how many hours before that trying to get this up. And I hopped on Striker Titan and completed the rest of the 50 in two hours. To, like, I'm not trying to be mean, but all I did was melee and toss grenades. It is what it is, you know, but that's probably the easiest way to do it. You, you, like if you find another way, that's awesome. But that's probably, that was the easiest way for me. Looks like the helmet ornament when Iron Banner matches during season two during this ornament. Easiest way, hop on a fire team. Just hop on a fire team with people you know, so you guys can coordinate and win matches. Like you have to win 25. So I won 25 and I don't know how I won 25. I was with a fire team half the time and the other half the time I was not, but I definitely recommend hopping in a fire team to try to get that done. 
All right, guys, we're coming to the end of the video. I'm not gonna ask you guys to like, like video, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff anymore, just because I feel like that's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying for you guys. I watched Sir Demetrius' video and he's like, yeah, I don't ask that. I want a genuine subscriber base. I want a genuine support base. And I'm like, you know what? I want that as well. Just because like, I know you guys like my brutally honest content and stuff like that. And I appreciate that. Um, if you want to support me, all that stuff is below and you can check that out if you wish. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you next time.